Good morning. Thank you so much for waking up with Newswest 9 Sunrise. It is Tuesday, April 28th. I'm Stephanie Mills. Let's go first to our weather forecast for this cool Tuesday morning. The murder trial of Tony Flint continues. Opening statements and witness testimony were Tuesday. Flint is accused of beating Terlingua bar owner Glenn Feltz to death in February of 2014. Your time is now 956 and we have continuing coverage. Officials just confirmed a TDCJ transport bus fell on top of a train and this is actually video sent to us from a viewer. You see a van that he just passed and then right here you see a guardrail that has just been destroyed. Welcome back at 633, 21 degrees outside. The new year brings changes to federal policy regarding the minimum wage and Obamacare. We have breaking news this morning. We're taking a look at the scene outside of the headquarters for the satirical newspaper Charlie Hebdo, where one journalist is dead and three officers have been wounded in a shooting. Welcome back at 639, 36 degrees outside. Injections may be the best way to treat knee osteoarthritis. Researchers compared the effect of various oral anti-inflammatories and steroid injections on knee pain. If you haven't noticed the litter problem in the Permian Basin, you may be living in a hole somewhere. So we asked people on Facebook, we asked you on Facebook, if you had any New Year's traditions or superstitions, and actually that was a very popular one. Yeah, it was mentioned. the grapes and, and the... The uh, undergarments and all that stuff too. <laughs> yeah, so we had Ellie mention the grapes, the 12 grapes tradition, and then actually Brandy, she mentioned opening a door and a window to be able to let out the old year and let in the new year, which I think is actually pretty cool. Stephanie, what's going on right now? Victor, we are at the corner of Neely and H Street in Midland. We are on the scene of a house fire. And what we know right now is that fire crews are putting out hot spots at this time. We know that the main fire is out. And according to the battalion chief we spoke to a little bit earlier, just about 10 minutes ago, around 10 units responded around 4 this morning. Residents at this apartment complex told us that three of the eight victims had their cars broken into here. I'm here at the Midland County Jail where the suspect in this shooting is being detained right now. He, Dan Higgins, it was said to have shot and killed Midland County Sheriff's Deputy Michael Naylor. His life will always be remembered. Tennis is a challenging sport, even with the use of your legs. Some would say nearly impossible without, but not for Adam Lucio. We are picking apples this morning iPhones, that is, and you can just feel the excitement, the eagerness. There's actually a crowd outside right now, and they're waiting to get their hands on the new iPhone 6. Our own Stephanie Mills takes a closer look in her News West 9 special report. You have to be born to be able to work this job. Not everybody can cope with it. If you've ever been in an emergency and had to call 911, Adam or Julio may have responded. They are EMTs or emergency medical technicians. They work 24-hour shifts and 48 hours off for 10 days a month. In Odessa, they are trained as firefighters as well as paramedics. So they've uh, gone through the maximum training that an EMT can go through. Most EMTs at Odessa Fire Department started through the program at Odessa College. They can either go through the EMT or firefighter program. They must be a basic EMT with a firefighter certification. When an individual is hired on, they must go through the paramedic program as well. And then finally, take the National Registry test, pass, and then they're good to go. You gotta wanna do this job. I mean, it's, it has its moments where it's challenging but it also has rewarding moments too. On a typical day, EMTs have a certain routine. Show up, check out the rig that you're on, whether it be the ambulance or the fire truck. Uh, make sure all your equipment's good to go, tip top shape. The first thing that an EMT does when they get to the scene is make sure it's safe. Then it's time to act. So the first thing that paramedics do when they get the patient in the ambulance is they get the vital signs. They get blood pressure, heart rate, and oxygen level. The most predictable thing about the life of these guys is that it's unpredictable. You see good things, you see a lot of bad things, you know, and just be, got to be able to handle that. One of the hardest things is a kid, you know, when you have to deal with the kid, especially when you lose a kid. Uh, not very many people can handle that. The fire department and the hospital emergency room work hand in hand. Dr. Sadiq Bose expresses how they work together. The advantage for me is when the patients arrive to the emergency room, uh, these guys are my eyes and ears. And that gives us a head start of 
how to start the treatment the moment they come into the emergency room. While there are many experiences that are traumatic, there are times when a positive can come out of a negative. He had a heart attack, and uh, we rushed him to the hospital. We get in the hospital, and he went into cardiac arrest. Well, the, the doctor shocked him, and he came back to life and asked what happened. That was probably one of the coolest things I've ever seen. Emergency medical technicians save lives. They experience many serious situations on a daily basis. But a simple thank you can turn it all around. Yeah, knowing that it's our job to try and save people's lives, you know, just one word like that. Can... Yeah, it makes you have a good day. Yeah. Stephanie Mills, News West 9. Well, religious persecution is still an issue today, and in China, persecution by government is a common thing. But there are those fighting against it. Stephanie Mills has more in her News West 9 special report. A normal, rainy day on the streets of China. But for one pastor, his day takes a turn for the worst. He's seen here in the middle, in the striped shirt. More than 20 government officials rush him into a vehicle, and as they quickly drive away, the now imprisoned pastor's congregation is left wondering what happened. That was a Saturday. Many believers were in the church uh, doing clean up uh, to prepare for Sunday worship. And then two uh, police uh, showed up and uh, pretend to be very friendly and uh, ask my father to have tea together. All of a sudden, th over 30 police came out and uh, kidnapped my father mm -hmm. from his office. On that day of November 16, 2013, Pastor Zhang Xiaojie was in his church office when he was taken. His daughter, Zhang Weixing, says two months after his kidnapping, even his lawyers were not allowed to meet with him. The government charged Pastor Xiaojie with fraudulence and disturbing social order. And the government, of course, uh, has uh, kept making false uh, accusations and uh, evidences. And uh, when my father was uh, accused by the government uh, as committing fraudulence, uh, they don't, they can't even produce a witness. Pastor Xiaojie had helped a family of believers after losing their son in a factory fire. The government refused to make compensation to the family, so Xiaojie decided to step in. He helped get the family compensation from the government for more than $700,000. As a thank you, the family gave some of the money to the church and Pastor Xiaojie. The government tried to get the family to speak out against him, but they refused. The witness in their family hasn't been heard from since. Pastor Xiaojie was sentenced on July 4, 2014, a day we here in the U.S. see as Independence Day. But now, this Chinese pastor will spend 12 years in prison. But even through all this, Xiaojie still has hope. So my father uh, told my younger sister, and uh, he is uh, just uh, full of energy and uh, passion in the prison. And uh, Oscars uh, not do not worry about him. So this is the uh, best uh, location to share the gospel. So God uh, continue to use me. After Pastor Xiaojie's kidnapping and arrest, his daughter, Zhang Huixing, spoke out about his freedom. She spoke with media to make an appeal for his release. But the Chinese government arrested and detained her twice, the second time with her baby. And uh, at the same time, there are two uh, video monitoring devices basically uh, recording uh, every second of our movements. At that time, um, our baby was very scared. Huixing and her baby were released five days later, but were still being monitored. Most everyone in her family had been jailed at that time. When she was behind bars, she said God gave her a reason to hope. After taking away every uh, items of my belongings in the black jail, the only item left was a copy of the Bible in my book, in my pocket. And I was so grateful. 
In the end, uh, we decided to ask help uh, from Pastor Bob Fu to um, help our freedom. Bob Fu, along with those in his organization, China Aid, rescued Zhang Huixin, her husband, and their baby. They were taken out of China and flown to the U.S. and are now living in Midland. The family has been allowed one year to decide whether to appeal for asylum under religious freedom. So I do believe that uh, if without the help uh, from Pastor Bob Fu and uh, the co-workers at China Aid, uh, my father uh, might have already uh, been mis uh, disappeared. And because of this uh, pressure uh, internationally, and uh, that uh, that made my father at least uh, still uh, in prison alive. Tomorrow, we'll show you how the Zhang family is adjusting in Midland. We'll also learn more about Bob Fu, the man who rescued the family. His organization, China Aid, is responsible for helping many in China escape religious persecution. For now, Stephanie Mills in the News West 9 studios. Zhang Huixing, her husband, and their baby fled China to get away from religious persecution. With the help of China Aid, they made it out and are now in Midland. When asked how her family is adjusting to the U.S., she said, I just feel the uh, people uh, here are so nice. And uh, we were shocked, uh, of course, when we came here, we didn't see video cameras on any s street corners. <laughs> and, uh, but we feel much safer, actually. Because uh, our Chinese government said uh, the reason they install all these uh, uh, monitoring video cameras is to protect our safety. Um, but actually, it produced more fear to me and our family. The family was helped out of the country by Pastor Bob Fu and his organization. Bob Fu is the founder and president of China Aid, which is based out of Midland. It's an international nonprofit Christian human rights organization. They help those in China escape religious persecution and promote rule of law in China. China Aid was established uh, on the garage uh, in the garage of uh, my uh, Philadelphia home, and uh, at that time I was the only sort of uh, staff. With, without really uh, much support at all. So um, in 2004, when we moved here, essentially we formally sort of uh, established China Aid as a more healthy organization. When asked why Midland, Bob had this to say. Uh, you know, like the question, why Nazareth, right? <laughs> and Midland uh, just uh, have... Uh, it's a small community uh, with big dreams. So this is a very unique community. It's, of course, it's a uh, you know oil and gas uh, business. Uh, it seems uh, on the surface nothing to do with uh, the persecuted uh, faithful in China, but um, look at you know the Midlanders. It has uh, everything to do with the world affairs. The Zhang family China Aid rescued now plans to continue to lend a hand with the organization. They said they want to follow God's leading as they work to fight against persecution in China. I am hoping that uh, I can uh, testify and uh, be a witness for God um, and uh, be a testimony, share the testimony in more places. And of course, I don't know, like uh, in the future, uh, how much I could uh, do. So I'm praying uh, that um, God can lead me, just like how He leads, led me to come to the U.S. The daughter, Hui Xing, and her mother have visited Pastor Zhang several times in prison. The pastor has to labor long hours manufacturing socks there as a part of their re-education through labor process. First Baptist Church in Midland is covering temporary housing and China Aid has been taking care of the family's living expenses. But in January, they have to find another place to stay and help with living expenses before they can look for work. If you'd like to lend a hand or help them to find work, you can contact First Baptist or China Aid and Bob Fu. That number is 432-689-6985.
We also have more information on our website, newswest9.com. Click on our news links. And I'm Stephanie Mills in the News West 9 studios.